Good morning, and welcome to Worship with Peace United Church of Christ in Santa Cruz, California, on this seventh Sunday of Easter, May 16th, 2021. My name is David Patti, and it is my joy to serve as pastor of this open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, know that you are welcome to join us in listening for and responding to a God who is still speaking, calling us in love and faith to works of justice, mercy, and peace. Since the end of April, we've been alerting you to the return of live worship services in our sanctuary, beginning Sunday, June 6th. The public health environment is changing fast, but right now, taking care for everyone's safety and maximizing the seating in our sanctuary, we are going to ask you to sign up in advance to attend worship in person. The sign up for June 6th will be available this coming Friday on our website. We'll be able to accommodate the most people safely by organizing our seating in pairs which will work easily enough for people who live in the same household and families who sign up for a couple of pairs or maybe more. But it can also work for friends in different households. If you're a single person and vaccinated, connect with a friend and talk about the two of you signing up and sitting together. There will also be space for people to sign up as singles. And of course, there's space for visitors. But those of you who are comfortable and able, we're really encouraging you to buddy up. June 6th will be a communion Sunday. And for the time being, we will ask that you bring your own elements and vessels to the communion celebration. A container of cracker or bread or cake, a thermos or bottle of juice or wine, and remember that the first Christians gathered, bringing together what they had the way they could in rather strange circumstances. Know also that we're going to do everything we can to make worship friendly for kids. Services are going to be shorter, and there will be a designated area where kids can stretch out with quiet activities during the talkier parts of the service. There'll be more on that next week and in the newsletter. Finally, I encourage you to remember that next Sunday is Pentecost, which celebrates the church coming into being through the spiritual gift of understanding, understanding across differences and divisions, a very important gift for us to take to heart in these times. Again, good morning. I'm so glad you're here. Let us join together now to worship God in spirit and in truth. Good morning, friends. Please join me responsively. Christ came proclaiming peace to those who were far off and to those who were near. Through him, we are called to live with courage in God's loving embrace. So we are no longer strangers or aliens, but in Christ, one body and one spirit. Together, we are citizens with the saints, members of the household of God built on the prophets and apostles with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone. Yeah. 
If you're joining us live on Sunday morning, whatever platform you're using for access, I invite you to share your prayer requests and concerns through the chat function now. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your presence among us, for your gift to us in Jesus Christ, for this church that we share in faithfulness to you and continuation of his ministry, and for the abundant blessing of our lives. Living God, You show yourself to be the savior of all, and you know in full what we know only in part, how much we need a savior. Rescue us from egotism and complacency. Purify our motives and shake us from sentimentality. Help us to hear your will clearly and to live it boldly. Oh God, there are too many whose lives are crippled by illness, ignorance, bitterness, and grief, by exploitation and envy, by anger and fear, want and neglect. We know and love some of these. We trust that you know and love all, all of them, all of us. Take us, we pray, our time, talent, and treasure, all that we have and all that we are. Take and use each one of us and our gifts to fulfill the purposes of your creation, to renew your children and our beauty in your image. Especially we pray that your healing may touch all those whom we name before you in this quiet moment. We pray for Mary and for David and all who struggle for health and deal with pain. We pray for our neighbors without homes, for those who have been dislocated this past week, for the many who wonder where they may lay their heads in safety. We pray for those who suffer with COVID, the afflicted, their families and communities, and nations like India and Brazil, places all over the world where the virus is widespread and terrifying. We pray for the people of Israel and Palestine and the occupied territories and all who are caught in intractable resentments and reflexive violence. May there rise among them leaders for justice with the courage to make peace. And we pray for our political leaders and ask that you would guide, O God, guide our nation in the way of justice and peace. God, help us and guide us to be your hands at work in the world, that all may come to serve your love and that our humanity may be fulfilled as we have known it in the way of Jesus. Amen. Please join in this prayer. Earth maker, life giver, pain bearer, source of all that is and all that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven. May the hallowing of your name echo through the universe. 
May your heavenly will be done by all creatures, great and small. And may your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need this day, feed us. For the hurt we inflict on one another, forgive us. Through times of temptation, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 people and said, friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in the ministry. So one of the men who had accompanied us throughout the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them and the lot fell on Matthias and he was added to the 11 apostles. Casting lots is found many times in the Bible. In ancient cultures and in some places still today, it's understood as a way of discerning the truth or making a decision. Lots could be sticks with markings or stones with symbols like dice tossed into a small area. The way they land offering illumination or directing resolution. You find it in the story of Jonah, sailors desperate to understand why a violent storm has come upon them all of a sudden and out of nowhere. It has to be somebody's fault, and they think if they know who to blame, they can find a way to make it stop. So they cast lots, and the lot falls on their strange passenger whom they had suspected anyway. The lot fell on Jonah. So they threw him overboard, thinking that would help them to escape the storm, and, well, you know the story. Swallowed by a whale, the whale spit him out, and all of it is about how God is with us at every turn, calling us into relationship, calling us to live for justice, love, and mercy, and calling us always to pay attention and not to run away. In other places, you find lots cast to determine which of two goats shall live, and which will be the scapegoat presented as an offering for sins. Lots are cast to determine how an inheritance will be shared and the land divided. Lots were cast by the soldiers at the cross to see how they would divide up the garments of the dying Jesus. And from among those who knew Jesus in his public ministry and were witness to his resurrection and received his commission, Lots were cast to determine a 13th apostle, a replacement for Judas, who had betrayed Jesus and was now dead. Would it be Matthias or Barsabbas? In some ways, it looks like gambling, doesn't it? Allowing chance to make the choice. And especially for Christians of our particular tradition, that association with gambling leaving it to chance, doesn't feel right at all. We prefer to believe that by our virtue, striving, and smarts, we should determine outcomes. There should have been some further test to decide between Matthias and Barsabbas which one was better, better suited 
better able, maybe hungrier for the job to serve as an apostle. Maybe there should have been a candidating sermon. Perhaps they should have debated and then been put to a vote. You've heard of the so-called Protestant work ethic, the notion that you work for what you get, you get what you work for, and just about everything is a matter of determination with God approving the righteous who, of course, work harder than anybody else. I think the casting of lots, as we find it in the story of choosing a new apostle, challenges that sensibility. Sometimes we get to the end of our wits, reach an impasse, or just go as far as we can know. But we're still responsible for carrying on, called to act. In another sense, casting your lot with someone or something is making a decision based on faith. Not necessarily knowing exactly how it's going to go, but making a choice on the basis of who and what you trust and where you want to go together. It's kind of an old-fashioned way of saying it, but we understand the expression when applied to relationships, I cast my lot with you. On the basis of love and respect, trust and hope, I cast my lot with you. I don't know. We can't know the future, but on the basis of what we do know and trust, I will take this journey with you. I go where you go. It's the same sense as the old wedding vow. I plight thee my troth. I cast my lot with you. A continuing theme in the biblical story of God's call to Israel is the place and role of leadership in that relationship. The development of their relationship with God and their struggles for community and leadership that serve this relationship with God, making choices and decisions, discerning the right direction. After all their highs and lows and frustrations with patriarchs, warrior chieftains, judges and kings, we begin to understand the Messiah who comes as a suffering servant, engaging all of our pains and all of our joys, leading by walking with us through all of it in trust of God's love. Today in the book of Acts, we're looking at people who would continue and expand a movement in that way. I say a movement because I don't believe Jesus' first followers are driven to build a new institution, what we think of as the church. I think the evidence points them to carrying on a movement, a way of life in love as they knew it in Jesus, to restore the nation of Israel and God's calling to Israel to be a witness to God's justice for all the nations. I'm certainly not suggesting that institutions are a bad thing. I think all of us have seen recently how much we need healthy and vibrant institutions of community and common cause, and how vulnerable we are when such institutions are undermined by partisan interest and selfish neglect. The institution matters. But what gives life to the church is not the institution. It's the movement, the spirit, the love and life in it, the calling to God's people for which Jesus gave himself. It's the mission. That's the thing. That's the fundamental thing that makes the institution matter. And what is the mission of the church? We heard it very clearly in our reading from Acts this morning. It is to bear witness to Jesus and his way, trusting with him in the power of God's love to redeem all things, 
a faith that we live out together through loving acts of justice, mercy, and peace. It is to live and work together in Christ so that others may see through us how God loves them. That's the mission of the church. Our fundamental relationship to God and to each other, the particular works and programs through which we enact that mission, those are our ministries. But it is the mission that gives them life. Last week, our church began the Stories of Peace, a small group process we're undertaking in the month of May to share our experience and invite the guidance of God's Holy Spirit, revitalizing our church as we emerge from a stretch of interruptions and setbacks into a new day and a future we just can't see in full. It's a time for looking at who we are and who we hope to become together. These small groups are called peace pods. They're spread throughout the week, and it was very exciting for me to at least check in with each one of them. It gave me a chance to meet some people, lots of people, for the very first time. One of the gathering questions for the peace pods was to ask, what do you hope for these gatherings? Lots of folks, the way I heard it, just about everybody said, I want to connect. I want to engage. I want to be in relationship with the church. That's my hope too, that we will be in relationship as a congregation of the United Church of Christ, connected and growing together in our faith, giving ourselves freely and without reserve to Jesus' ministry in this church, celebrating the amazing gifts of unity and diversity, striving for justice and peace, living and working together so that others may see through us how God loves them. That's our mission, grounded in our faith in Jesus and his way, connected and growing in that faith, whatever we do next, however the lot lands. It's going to be great. To the glory of God. Amen.
so that in the darkness love can show the way so now the stage is set you can feel your own heart beating in your chest no this life's not over yet so you get up on your feet and do your best you play So that in the darkness love can show the way. Oh yes, even in this world today, love can show the way. In our world today, love will show the In these days of challenge and opportunity, we are called to be faithful stewards of the gifts we have. Our personal resources of time, talent, and treasure, the facilities and ministries we share, and our mission in proclaiming the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ, a truth that gives us courage and charges us to build a future of justice and peace. Let us give ourselves and what we have, living and working together in Christ, that others may see in us how God loves them. I could travel all the oceans, cross the deserts, climb the mountains just to share your story. Bring you glory and win souls for you. I could sing like an angel song, so humble and so thankful, full of drama and emotion, so the world could know your truth. I could show up every Sunday, lead the choir and Bible study, and they all would come. I could achieve success on earth, but success cannot define my work. All these actions, all these words, it will not matter in the end. The songs will fade to silence. Stories they will cease. The dust will settle, covering all my selfless As I strive to serve you, won't you make it clear to me that if I do not love, I am nothing, and if I cannot live my life loving my brother, then how can I? Nothing could stop you from living for me, dying for me, so that I would know that songs will fade to silence.
Please join me in covenant. We covenant with God and with each other to walk together in all God's ways as the holy is revealed to us, to give ourselves freely and without reserve to Jesus's ministry in this church, to celebrate through worship God's amazing gifts of unity and diversity, to take up Christ's mission around the world striving for justice and peace, to care for the earth and all her creatures, reconciling ourselves to them in love. For God gives immeasurable grace into all life and every life. Amen. Wherever you are, wherever you go, serve God with gladness. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted. Honor all people loving and serving God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of God, creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with you and lead you this day and forevermore. Amen. You were dreaming on a park bench round a broad highway somewhere when Touch to find you on that broad high.
atención. 